Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode I hope to try and send my little Mars probe Angua to Mars, but uh, I've got a lot of considerations to think about. I've been doing Mars stuff on the side. I've, I'm actually working on a Mars ascent vehicle on board an SLS sort of thing. Uh, just on my own so far. Uh, probably going to feature it in a, in a special video sometime, but uh, based on my my experiences there, I decided that this really does need some drogue parachutes, so I've added those. But I've also realized that this needs to make sure that it has its center of mass lower than its center of lift so it doesn't flip around. Uh, not that I expect that the heating will actually damage anything, but, you know, it's just better if the, uh, the thruster is facing down initially. Otherwise, uh, when the parachutes deploy, it's going to swing around pretty violently. So, and I don't know what kind of, uh, it might have aerodynamic damage at that point. We are working with FAR here. So, that's the consideration. And, uh, yep, so I wanted it uh, oriented properly, which means this is okay. But I've... I've seen some interesting effects, uh, for instance, with this uh, Geiger counter. Uh, oh, look, the center mass is uh, center of lift is all the way over here. Why? Because of the barometer, and it's a little bit skewed because of the barometer. Uh, so center of lift highly, highly dependent on where these instruments are, and so I have to place the Geiger counter really, really close to the antenna and then it works out but that's not the big problem obviously uh, I, you've noticed I've left something off here and if I put three of these oh dear yeah well now there's an asymmetry I don't know why there should be an asymmetry but it clearly uh, heads for this one I think tweak scale well, well if if it wasn't for the instruments doing the sim similar sort of thing, I'd say that tweak scale had something to do with it. Because tweak scale steps are a little bit weird right now. So 0.5, 1, that's normal. But going back down, oh, now it's fine. Huh. Uh, it was uh, weird before. Okay, anyway, that's fine. But uh, we have other problems. Uh, I really don't want a 0.5-ish. I want it more like... Actually, uh, come to think of it, it doesn't seem to move the center mass that much, does it? Yeah, it moves the center of lift more than it moves the center of mass, which is... Oh, now it's fine. Do I believe it? Uh, I think it's just the center of lift indicator is just bad. And so that's a problem because I'm, I need to worry about this to make sure it's oriented properly when it re-enters. You'll notice I don't have the heat shield. And that's because in the testing that I did for the Mars Ascent vehicle, it didn't seem like the heat shield was necessary. Now, uh, I still use a heat shield with the Mars Ascent vehicle because uh, when I'm trying to land it on Mars because uh, that is what brings its center of mass down. It needs to have the heat shield in order to make sure its center mass is in appropriate position. So it's not actually because of the heating. Uh, so yeah, I think this will be all right without the heat shield, which is good because then we can use its main thruster in order to uh, make the descent orbit. And also it's just lighter, of course. And avionics is okay. Now we've got the main probe here. So we attach it like this. And now uh, when this is signaled to decouple, it'll decouple this off as well as the, as the side fairings. Come on, side fairings. I need you now. Okay. So it's like that now. But you can see the solar panel solution I found. Again, I haven't put uh, Infernal Robotics in because it's not technically uh, compatible with uh, RP0, and I don't have the time to make the configs for it. Uh, so we've got uh, these on cubic octagonal. Oh boy, I hope I didn't do anything wrong here. Uh, cubic octagonal struts here, and those were the smallest structural parts I could mount them on. Uh, actually, the these these are interesting. They're they're fairly light, uh, but they're they're not as light as the cubic octagonal struts, and they didn't seem to be m modifying themselves in mass the way I expected them to based on tweak scale. So, 
we'll leave it be. Um, so I hope that this is going to be enough solar panel re if the sun is facing one of these directions. And that'll have to do it. Um, so yeah, that is the solution I found. It makes the fairing a little bit bigger, but that's not a huge problem. And I think the rest is basically the same. The amount of fuel is the same all around. Oh, I've added some uh, separation thrusters to uh, to this portion here, so I can separate a little bit more cleanly. And but I don't have them on this part. Okay. So I'm going to well, we're going to try this out. I've added one more thing. I've added the precise node, but I think I'm also going to add trajectory window planner. I'm I'm taking Mars seriously here, so I'm going to try and hit the hit the mark quite right instead of using the little tweaking little handles on the maneuver node thing. So we'll try and do it right and I'll get to that after a brief break. Okay, getting set to launch, but I have a few more tweaks to make. First of all, it occurred to me that uh, now this is a little bit heavier, so we need to find a way to reduce 0 0.7, 0 0.17 tons. Reminds me I should lock the upper tanks right away. Okay, and uh, you know what? Because I want this to work. I will also lock one of the electric char one of the electric charge pools, one of the batteries, if you will, on the cores. Well, that cuts five seconds off of our burn time there. Right now, one more little thing I need to do is the gimbling on these. I want to action group. So we had commutron solar panels. Okay, uh, so I had the toggle engine, and that's the center one. And we'll keep that free for now. But I'm going to have a toggle gimbal on the outer ones as well. So initially on launch, we'll have gimbling on all the engines. Then we'll shut the center one down. And then we'll shut the outer ones and only have the verners, verniers. <laughs> I keep saying verners. Verniers uh, doing the gimbling. Okay. I think that covers everything. So that's the rocket all set. And now we need to get the timing right. So here's transfer window planner. I said trajectory window planner, which is not right. Transfer window planner. Kerbin to Duna, as it were. And starting on today's date. And I'm going to say no insertion burn because we're going to be doing aero braking. And it says here, enter the altitude of blah, blah, blah. If you intend to perform an a uh, flyby or air braking maneuver, it can enter zero or just say no insertion burn. Okay, and that is it, so let's plot it. Okay, so it gives us an optimal time there. Our total delta V, that's the ejection delta V, 3,949. Looks like we're going to have to eject at some inclination in order to hit it. And that's to avoid a mid-course plane change. This, I don't think, does mid-course plane changes, which is fine, because that we, we will do further adjustments later on anyway. So, yep, yeah, those are our details. And I am going to... I don't have curb alarm clock here, huh? Yeah, okay, I should get curb alarm clock in here to work with all this. Okay, now we're properly set up, and we can say add curb alarm clock alarm and so now we should have a little alarm there with all the details um, ah we get the actual calendar though it's a little bit early for a Mars mission if you go by that calendar date uh, but uh, yep anyway we've got it all set up so all we have to do is time warp and make sure that this is going to stop me from From warping probably with five minutes to go let's say okay I don't believe it it passed it darn it you were supposed to stop me I, I must have misconfigured it anyway okay well we're a little bit past our transfer point darn it but uh, we will 
How far off are we? Oh, okay, we're not too bad. Wait a minute. Isn't this better than the one we had before? <laughs> um, but it has no ejection angle and no ejection inclination. Oh, uh, initial orbit. And actually we want an initial orbit of 200. Okay, that makes more sense. All right. Okay, now add that alarm. Okay, there we go. And notice the phase angle is way different than we normally aim for with the moon. Uh, it's usually 45 degrees, and here we're aiming for uh, more like 80. So, yeah, that's in eight hours. I don't need a time warp at all. So yeah, uh, the benefit of Transfer Window Planner is it takes, I presume it takes into account the fact that these things are eccentric orbits with inclinations. And so now, this is not the normal transfer window you would expect for Mars, or, or Duna for that matter. But uh, because of the peculiarities of the orbits, we have a transfer window here. And so I'm going to make use of it. Okay, here we go. I no longer need curb alarm clock. Well, right now I don't need curb alarm clock. It'll be nice to have the ejection angle later on. But uh, for now, I'll leave it be. Uh, SAS is on. Throttle is up. Uh, all engines should have gimbling. Okay, yeah. Yep, okay. Let's get some decent distance here. Oh, uh, yes, we should match inclinations with the moon to minimize our inclination with respect to the rest of the, the solar system. Okay, ambient light adjustment to get some light on this situation. All right. All systems look good. Thrall is up. SAS is on. And ignition. And launch. Okay, tower clear, roll program. Oh dear, we've got deviations here. Uh, get back on. Oh, oh. Why is it that far off? Should have all of our gimbling here. Maybe the payload's not strapped down properly? Okay, well, we seem to have stabilized. Okay, I'm locking the gimbal on the center engine. Oh, shoot. Oh, uh, that's shut off the center engine. No, that's not what I... Well... Okay, we can do that, too. Uh, well, now that I've shut it off, I can't sh uh, turn it back on again. I hope the other ones were gimbal and not actually toggling the engine. That was not what I wanted to do. Okay, anyway, we need to pitch. Well, I'm not seeing the pitch oscillations that would lead me to lock gimbling on these engines. Okay, I, I think I see it starting out, maybe? Doesn't seem to be. Oh, that started it. Uh, that's. I tried to turn off gimbling, but it didn't work. Oh, maybe gimbling was off initially, or not. Okay, well, we don't have much control here now. Okay, set. And ignition. Okay, well, 
That was a wild ride up. But anyway, we have the Delta V to get to orbit. That is not a problem. I think uh, we should have fairing separation soon. Upper antenna is extended. Now if this configuration, at least the dish can somewhat get <laughs> get some reception. It doesn't have a heat shield on top of it. Uh, I'm just going to have that dish tuned to Kerbin. And I'm going to activate it now even. Okay, so there's a J2 engine and it is working fine. Oh, I should note, I dumped uh, engine igniter. Uh, people were correct, engine igniter was uh, sharply reducing our frame rates and physics, uh, physics fr uh, rates. So engine igniter is gone because it was causing way too much lag. It was responsible for about half the lag. Uh, anyway, you saw the launch just now, and I think uh, you'll agree that the launch was much much smoother. And so, but I'm going to continue simulating whatever I need to in order to pretend that I've got engine igniter. So I'm not going to relight engines that are off um, unless they are engines that can relight, and I know which ones those are. So the J2 can relight. Uh, it's uh, it normally has well, let's say one relight. Because, but I think it had up to two, and the one relight was, of course, famously for the translunar injection on the Saturn V. But uh, RL10 typically has ten max, and then I know common extensible cryogenic uh, is supposed to have like up to fifty. But yeah, I, I think uh, after playing around with this stuff for a while, I know how many relights the engines have so I shouldn't have any problems with that and I'll settle the fuel down hopefully engine igniter will be updated for 1.0.2 and it'll actually not have the the bug that caused it to have such an effect on my performance I don't know why it was having that effect get uh, the J2 throttles. Throttle isn't affected by the engine igniter. Yeah, it does. Okay, we could go with uh, less throttle now. Okay, here we go. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I was overshooting it. Alright, well, we're in a uh, an eccentric orbit. Not really 200, but I guess I'll have to take that. Let's separate off this stage for now. And uh, verify RCS is working. Okay, that's okay. Now we have to plot the transfer. I haven't used pre precise node very much. Reason I didn't use it before was uh, my first experience with it was somewhat clunky. Uh, it was a long time ago, and I didn't uh, I didn't like it. But I think it's improved. So nine hundred and no, 3,696. 3,696. Six. Okay. And then normal, 1,340. Ejection inclination. I guess that's my problem. I don't have much of an inclination. Maybe I should have gotten into a different initial orbit. Let's say I did add a maneuver here to fix this. I've got some delta V to spare. Yep, I'm sure I'm at fault for not having the right ejection inclination here. Made my orbit a little bit too flat. We seem to have a crash course lined up here now. Uh, not the greatest sort of orbit. Actually, it's not bad. We want sort of a I guess we want sort of a polar orbit for the orbiter portion of this, so that's not bad. And it'll be different by the time we get there anyway. So let's say let's see if we have 4700 meters per second, which is what these two add up to. So I need to unlock the top tank, uh, well the tank for the for this stage here. And let's see total delta v now. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got it. Okay, so we'll do these two burns. It's a weird-looking probe, I'll admit it. Okay, let's come out of time warp. Global joint reinforcement. So again, no engine igniter, but I'm going to start using RCS here to push forward. I'm going to assume one meter per second should actually be enough. Uh, throttle up and... Well, this might be a little bit early, but let's go for ignition. Could do the burn in two different parts and just go around, but I don't want to try and replot. We'll have to, I mean, I'm, I'm going to have to replot anyway, but we'll see. Hope this doesn't dip us too deep into Kerbin, I mean, Earth's atmosphere. Well, it's certainly bringing us down, but it probably won't uh, get past 130 kilometers, so that'll be alright. Oh boy, I hope this whole maneuver node system is telling me the truth here. Okay, so the minimum altitude during this burn was 162, let's say 162.4 kilometers. So, not, not horrible. Bit dodgy, not horrible. Oh dear, one thing I didn't think about was... What about these solar panels that are sort of sticking out as we try and air break around Mars? I wonder if they're gonna survive. The ones that are in the containers will, but uh, these big ones that are sort of sticking out might not. Not because of burning, it'll probably be because of aerodynamic stress. Speaking of which, okay, so those are our daily re-entry settings, just for reference. Parachutes, I should point out, for the lander, the info is like this. They are drogue chutes. They are set to deploy... Oh, I, I wanted them... Wait, I thought these guys were drogue chutes. I wanted them at 30,000. Oh, okay, well, let's fix... Okay, uh, I thought you were a drogue chute. should have started out at a much higher level. Anyway, I want uh, deployment at about 5,000. Uh, let's say 3,000. I think it's actually configured as a main chute right now. It has the drogue chute container, but that's not an indication of anything. Okay, so at least both chutes have the same parameters. But I found that the chutes are very important for orientation when trying to land on Mars. We're not going to be able to use up the MMHN if I should have started that a little bit earlier if I wanted to really exhaust it. Okay, going to temporarily take RCS off there. And we are going to not retract panels. I want to get to the tank. Now everything is bundled up so tightly. Okay. Now uh, decouple. Uh, activate these thrusters. And RCS because this needs RCS for stability. Somewhat blocked by the panels. They're in there somewhere. Oh, this might take longer than I expected for this burn. But now our orbital period's really long. Well, right now our orbit is not too far off. It's really this point here where we cross the intended orbit again. Oh, we were sort of off in this direction though. Correction burns will be necessary, but Delta V is available. Okay, we're coming close to the end of the burn, but uh, more importantly, the sun's out, and we're not quite flush to it right now, 
but uh, here's our electric charge situation given this kind of format so it looks like we've got about four to five times what the drain is that's not gonna be enough for Mars but hopefully as we uh, tilt a little bit more efficiently it'll work out or otherwise uh, while we're time warping I think these are supposed to be configured to not drain so much they go into their low power mode instead of their full thing again I can't I, I can turn off I can shut off the electric charge like this but I can't turn off the cores that seems to cause an issue so that's not an option and I can't turn them off even though the vehicle is much lighter than their you know this one could handle everything but I still can't turn these off because that seems to cause me to lose control it looks like we're matching it pretty much there I think we're past it now hold on I think we've we've done it now we have to adjust Ooh, okay that's crash course let's fine-tune that a little bit now okay 161 kilometers sounds good that's a good inclination there for our orbiter we don't want too high an inclina inclination come to think of it otherwise the lander is gonna have trouble communicating okay so that is our mid-course plane change. Okay, seems to think we're on track heading out. Now, see, while I'm time warping, the drain is only 0.25, which is good. But let's see if we can get some better sunlight here. Ah, oh, we've got, oh, we've got signal delay. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. Okay, 2.28 uh, seems like the best I can do. And while we're time warping, I think it'll be enough. We'll see. Okay, out to the mid-course plane change. Let's hope that our electric charge holds out fine. Oh, look at it dropping. Well, now it's recovering. Important that we still have a signal. That's very valuable. It's also a good timing. Uh, you can see uh, Kerbin and Mars, not Kerbin and Mars, Earth and Mars aren't going to be too far apart once we get to our target. Okay, now we're going to have to use some some of this stuff. Just point up maneuver, please. Actually, I don't think this obeyed the signal delay. It should have waited two minutes. Unfortunately, Remote Tech hasn't figured this part out yet, huh? And I don't think it's figured out throttle yet either. Nope. I mean, I don't know. What am I gonna do if it's... Anyway, I could have done this two minutes later. <laughs> I, could have... I mean, what am I supposed to do? Uh, but I don't understand... Yeah. Remote Tech seems to be able to stop me from turning on SAS for two minutes but it can't uh, can't manage the rest of this stuff or MacJeb but actually just the basic functions of the whole thing oh well okay here we go approaching the end of this burn and hopefully this will bring us right at Mars